Hi everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Basis Approaches. We'll be going through a couple of uh, respiratory um, symptoms, namely shortness of breath, cough, and hemoptysis. Shortness of breath is a common approach that we see in our day-to-day -day practice. It's one of those symptoms that traverses multiple systems, and hence it is helpful to have an, uh, a practical approach that helps one uh, characterize um, shortness of breath into different uh, big groups of conditions. Um, I find it helpful to think of it in terms of the character of breathlessness as well as, as some of its associated symptoms. So there's a strong exertional component, I think, of a cardiac cause uh, or sometimes anemia, and I ask for other uh, associated exertional symptoms. If uh, there is orthopnea or proximal nocturnal dyspnea, then I think uh, fluid overload uh, and whether or not it's driven by a cardiac or renal cause most of the time. In terms of associated symptoms, if there's cough, it suggests uh, any form of respiratory etiology. If there's wheeze, I think of asthma, COPD, um, shock straws, uh, possible some form of tumor. Uh, hemoptysis wise, uh, cancer, TB, vasculitis is important, and the other associated pulmonary uh, renal syndromes. And if there's weakness or bulbar symptoms, and neuromuscular causes are important to consider. Um, for all respiratory associated um, Presenting complaints and occupational history, drug history, and smoking history uh, are of paramount importance. So this slide is uh, fairly busy, um, but let's try to dissect it. So in terms of the respiratory disorders, um, the uh, symptom-based approach has been discussed. Uh, but another way to think of it uh, would be uh, in terms of um, common conditions, serious conditions, and um, paces. Uh, favorites or paces specific conditions. So I think of common chronic uh, disorders of breathlessness such as asthma, COPD, ILD, bronchiectasis. Serious ones would include uh, cancer, TB because of its public health implication, PE and pneumothoraxis. Um, and for paces specific, uh, pulmonary renal syndrome, sarcoidosis uh, are conditions to consider. It's important not to forget the pulmonary hypertension group of disorders uh, of which um, the classification is as stated here, uh, and sometimes uh, one would ha have to hunt for the secondary underlying disorder. And not to forget upper airway pathologies such as anaphylaxis, epiglottitis, and any compressive pathologies that can cause breathlessness as well. So um, cardiac and any cause of heart failure can cause breathlessness, uh, and the causes are elucidated here. Uh, commonly ischemic valvula, but for primary myocardial disorders, uh, there are many uh, other causes uh, that one can read around. Um, not to forget the neuromuscular group. Uh, these patients can have problems with breathing uh, because of muscular weakness, and hence it will be important to look for associated features such as um, weakness in any distribution or bulbar symptoms. Uh, anemia is an important cause, and as mentioned, it will be important to hunt for other associated exertional symptoms. And not to forget that fluid overload, apart from cardiac causes, which we often remember for, for an approach to shortness of breath, um, renal causes are important. And less commonly, um, hypoalbuminemia causing infusions uh, can also manifest with breathlessness. And the final group would be systemic disorders, such as acidosis, where they can be um, hyperventilating to uh, compensate for the acidemia, thyrotoxicosis, and anxiety. The next approach is that to cough. Um, so, in terms of the big groups, uh, respiratory, um, upper airway, cardiac, um, GI, and others. So, um, almost any respiratory disorder can cause cough. So, a way to think about it would be in terms of the um, common causes, serious causes, and paces related causes, uh, or in terms of um, an etiological sieve such as uh, infections, uh, autoimmune disorders, mitotic processes, etc. Um, in terms of the upper airway-wise, uh, if there's associated um, sinusitis, one should consider uh, wetchness. Um, upper airway cough syndrome and all that are also common causes, but um, they may or may not be that common, especially in the PACE Station 5 uh, exam. Um, heart failure itself can cause cough. And not to forget, GERD can cause associated laryngopharyngeal reflux uh, that can cause cough too. And the final miscellaneous group would include drugs such as ACE inhibitors, smoker's cough, uh, and functional cough. 
And the last approach is that of hemoptysis. So hemoptysis-wise, uh, it is important to firstly exclude epistaxis and hematemesis. Um, and secondly, uh, to screen for any other bleeding manifestations that may suggest a more systemic coagulopathy. Um, following which, uh, if the above two are negative, then one would then uh, go down the uh, true hemoptysis route. Uh, and common causes would be that of bronchiectasis, lung cancer, tuberculosis, and pulmonary embolism. Uh, but for the PACES exam, um, the pulmonary renal syndromes are important to uh, consider. So life-threatening causes would be that of wetchness or wood pastures, uh, and uh, other, uh, some of the other vasculitis can also cause a less um, uh, severe picture of things. And finally, uh, it's important not to forget the cardiac causes, namely uh, pulmonary edema where you can get frothy pinkish sputum or mitral stenosis uh, as a cause of hemoptysis. So we've come to the end of uh, this presentation. I hope you found it useful.